Any public comment? Follow the regular meeting of the Board of Education School District number 40 at 6 p.m. on Monday, June 24, 2024, as part of the Performing Arts Center. Uh, roll call. Are you here? Chet Smith? Here. Mona Dixon? Here. Jason Farrell? Here. Lindsay Hines? Here. Andrew Ware? Here. Here. Morgan Smith? All right, approval that the board members participating remotely. Aaron's not on this year. Not having any. All right, pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Right. Approval of the minutes. Uh, approval of the minutes on a regular Board of Education meeting, May 28, 2024. So moved. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Approval of the minutes of the closed session of the special meeting of the Board of Education, May 22nd, 2024. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Communications, public comment, and participation. Okay. Presentation of the 2024-2025 school year budget, Mr. Gallon. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Um, so I'm just going to propose uh, the 2024-25 school di district budget. Uh, first, for agenda, we're going to go over uh, our calendar the review of our revenue assumptions, our expenditure assumptions, and our budget overview. So calendar, normally during June and July, we will put this on public display. Uh, June 24th, tonight, I'll be presenting that. Uh, August 12th, we will have the public hearing and adopt the FY25 budget. Uh, September 15th, I will submit this to ISBE. October 15th, we will submit our annual financial report to ISBE. And then February through March, uh, we'll amend that budget if needed. Um, so a typical budget cycle, uh, usually we start back all the way back in November uh, for this budget when we set that tax levy. Uh, normally in February, we're going to be doing that amend amendment for the uh, prior year and then um, always be looking at like a multi-year projection. Uh, during March, we'll start looking at our staffing needs for the upcoming year. Uh, during the spring months, we'll meet with departments and go over all their budgets. In uh, June, we'll have our budget presentation, and then September, we'll submit it. Um, so some revenue assumptions. The local economy is improving um, with property taxes increasing, uh, mainly due to um, everybody's assessed value going up. Um, EAV is up 6.1%, while property taxes are up 6.3%. Um, the Ed Fund alone uh, saw a $3.1 million increase in local revenues. Um, <clears throat> state um, funding, evidence-based funding, the state has approved $300 million to go into the tier funding. Um, we don't know what that tier is going to be yet for our district. That usually comes uh, late July, early August is when they gave, give us those. And then federal funding, um, CARES Act, ESSER dollars, they're ending. Um, so we're only gonna have about a million dollars of carryover into next year that we'll be utilizing. 
Um, so revenues by uh, source budgeted, you're going to have your local, which is going to be, you know, about 87.5 million. And that's about 70% of our dollars generated. The state will be about 20% and federal about 10%. Now, typically, um, the state is usually around 23, 24%, while federal is around 6 to 7%. But because of the ESSER dollars, um, that's skewed a little bit for this year. Um, so by source code on these operating fund revenues, so the previous slide that I showed you, that was our overall. This is just going to be for our operating funds, so your education, your o and and your transportation. Um, so local property taxes make up about 40% of that. Um, then you have other local funding, which is going to include your um, corporate personal property replacement taxes, your interest, and then any fees like textbooks, athletics, food service, um, that really makes up all of that local property or all those local dollars. Um, the state, that's going to include your evidence-based funding, and then it's going to include various grants from, you know, transportation, private tuition, bilingual, or career and technical uh, grants. And then federal, that's going to be your, your ESSER dollars, your Title I, II, III, um, your IDEA, National School Lunch Program, um, and then your CARES Act money. Um, so a little bit more on our revenues on our local side, property taxes in 2023, our EAV was, you know, 978 million. Now we're over a billion dollars in 2024. And then corporate property replacement taxes, those are actually decreasing for this upcoming school year. Um, the Illinois Department of Revenue is expecting a 17% decrease from prior year levels. And they're looking at in the future going forward, probably coming back to our 2019, 2020 um, levels, which are significantly less than what we've been receiving these past three years. Um, I believe the reason for that is because of our, because of all the uh, businesses being pumped with federal dollars through uh, the CARES Act and and all of those other uh, federal programs that they released during COVID, that that really increased those profit margins for those uh, businesses. And that's kind of why we saw that huge influx in that um, CPPRT dollars. Uh, interest, that's still, um, we're still getting about five, 5.25% 5 um, for, for all our dollars um, that are in our um, PMA and uh, Illinois funds. And then bond sales, we didn't have any this year. So nothing changes with that. On the state and federal side, um, you know, our evidence-based funding, that's going to increase. We know that that 300 million is gonna be coming to us. Um, we just don't know which tier we're gonna fall in yet. Um, so depending on what tier we fall in will depend on how much extra money we get off of our base minimum, which is what we got this year. That's how they calculate that. Um, <clears throat> other state grants, um, we're going to see an increase in those. Mainly, you know, our transportation. We're going to see a, a larger increase in that uh, reimbursement, and then our preschool for all. That's just another example. Um, we're estimating about one hundred and sixty thousand dollars for that one. Um, <clears throat> with you know the end of the ESSER and CARES dollars, we need to expend all of those by twelve thirty one twenty four. Um, we'll have about a million dollars of that um, to utilize, um, about 400,000 in salaries, 46,000 in uh, purchases and supplies, and about 550,000 in uh, capital outlay is what we're projecting for this year. Um, <clears throat> so expenditure assumptions, you know, we're seeing a staffing increase for next year, uh, mainly due to um, some administration and some um, building uh, help at a few of our buildings that we've increased. And then purchase services, utilities, and supplies, those are all gonna increase just because of inflation. I mean, everything just seems to be costing a lot more these days. So those are all going to be increased in this budget. And then capital outlay, we actually saw a decrease and that's mainly due to the fact that we're not going to be doing $10 million 
of um, HVAC renovations like we did last summer. Um, so expenditures by fund, um, ed fund, you know, that's going to be about 70%. Group insurance, which is next, is about 10%. Um, now, if you look at your state budget form within the packet that I gave you, the group insurance and ed fund are combined uh, into fund 10 there. So as you can see, the education fund makes up for about 80% of all dollars um, that we utilize throughout the school year. Um, so ed fund uh, revenues and expenditures over, you know, since 2015, 2016 school year, we're definitely higher, you know, one of the highest that we've been, but that was to be expected with, you know, inflation and everything that we've seen over these past couple of years. Um, but we're also generating the most dollars that we ever had. So, um, you know, the revenues and expenditures are staying on, you know, the same uh, path trajectory. Uh, so one of the one of the big reasons why we're seeing an increase in our operating funds is because of our um, all of the buildings now having AC. Uh, from, you know, from back in 2017 when we didn't have any to now we've doubled our utility costs. <laughs> So we're projecting about $2.1 million for heating, electricity, AC, water, and sewer for next year. Um, and then capital projects that we'll, we'll be tackling this year, um, LED lighting, that's always ongoing. Our 10-year health life safety survey, we're gonna be looking at replacing a fire alarm system this year. Um, the Lincoln Irving pre-construction costs, so everything that we're, we're going to have to get uh, together over the course of this year to be on track for our 2026 uh, um, uh, breaking ground of that uh, new project. And then our high school, we have our front entrance and welding shop. I know that that was already, already approved in this previous budget, but because it's going to be going into the next fiscal year, we'll still have to carry some of those costs forward. Parking lots, uh, concrete repairs, the horseman boiler, same situation as the high school front entrance and welding shop, and then just preventative maintenance. Um, we have a lot of heat pumps and other HVAC needs that we need to keep up on uh, and replace, and then flooring needs. Um, we have a couple of projects that we'll be tackling just to update some flooring um, and get some of the classrooms ready for um, to be actually utilized. So here's our uh, FY25 budget summary. Um, as you can see, the only um, the only three funds, which are going to be transportation, your capital projects, and your tort, are going to have um, are going to be overexpended versus the revenues. Transportation, we always are budgeting higher than we typically utilize. So nine times out of 10, we won't see a deficit in that transportation fund. Capital projects, that's mainly due to the abatement of our 1% facility sales tax to pay for our bonds. And then the tort fund, um, I'm starting to shift a few um, different dollars from the education fund over to the tort fund. So over um, this year, we might see a deficit in there. Um, but as we go forward, that, that deficit will um, significantly decrease. But as you can see, our ending fund balance is um, still about 950000 at the end of this year. So uh, any questions? Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Now on the agenda. Recommended motion to the Board of Education to consider consent agenda items A through G1 and H through RR, as well as consent agenda item G2 as presented. Following item to go from the consent agenda to be considered as an individual item. Item SS, Board of Bid, 2024, parking lot, and playground improvements. I have a motion. Second. 
скажем, ну, Uh, 
Aaron Walter Smith. Audrey Anderson. Aye. Judge Smith. Aye. Mona Dixon. Aye. Jason Farrell. Aye. Lindsay Hines. Aye. Andrew Weir. Aye. Moving on. Resolution to approve the 2025 tentative budget for public display and establish a public hearing. Recommended motion that the Board of Education approve placing the 2024 2025 school district budget on display for public inspection, as well as publishing notice of public hearing for August, 20, August 12, 2024, 6 p.m., as presented and as listed. So, Ms. Second. Discussion. All right, roll call. Uh, Aaron Walter Smith. Audrey Adamson. Aye. Chuck Smith. Aye. Mona Dixon. Aye. Jason Farrell. Aye. Lindsay Hines. Aye. Andrew Weir. Aye. Approval of consolidated district plan. Recommended motion is that the Board of Education approve the district's consolidated district plan for the 2024 2025 school year as required by the Illinois State Board of Education. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Aubrey Addison. Aye. Chester Smith. Aye. Melinda Dixon. Aye. Jason Farrell. Aye. Lindsay Hines. Aye. Aaron Walter Smith. And you're aware. Aye. Approval of, of the Illinois State Board of Education required Mullen Valley School District number 40 physical restraint time out reduction plan. Recommended motion that the Board of Education approve ISDB required Mullen Co Valley School District number 40 PRTO reduction plan. So moved. Second. Uh, discussion. Uh, I just had a question regarding this. I was trying to look from last year's one of if anything had changed based off of I know that we submit this each year and then to guess about what those are looking like and in terms of reaching the, the metrics for the students. The State Board of Education um, requires three goals. They, they tell you what two of the three are going to be, and then you have um, a choice of, I think, uh, it was seven to pick one of, one of those goals. Um, and the, the optional goals are based on the state data in terms of trends for who's most likely to have um, an incident of time out of the screen. Um, so from last year to this year, we changed one of our goals because um, we didn't meet that particular optional goal. Um, and then we had to kind of say why we didn't meet it, which was we had a high need student that moved in and was um, meeting a lot of support in that one student alone didn't meet it. Um, but we didn't meet one of our three goals this year, uh, which was an overall uh, at least a 10% reduction in the use of physical restraint for time out. And so we met that goal. Um, which was the first time we met even one of the three. Um, and so uh, this plan we have, uh, we, we're going to try for a different optional goal this time. It's our third, third time around to see if we can meet one that focuses on students with autism. Um, and then, of course, the other two uh, requirements, which are uh, the 10% reduction and then which it has to do with the number of incidents um, within a five day. Five, uh, five or fewer incidents within a thirty days. So, thank you. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's before we got up. Remember what we had last year. So, also, thank you. Appreciate it. And, and to be clear, our data is mostly um, we have. I think we had one timeout, um, and we don't have any isolated timeouts in our. In our <laughs> so the other, uh, the other fifty-nine <laughs> were um, uh, physical restraints mostly. Um, Contributed to students with a lot of behavior dysregulation in our uh, elementary program as well as our elementary high school. Mm -hmm. Questions? All right. Roll call, please. Judge Smith? Aye. Ramona Dixon? Aye. Jason Farrell? Aye. Lindsay Hines? Aye. Aaron Walter Smith? Audrey Adamson? Aye. Andrew Weir? Aye. Approval of a memorandum of understanding between the Boys and Girls Club and the Mullen Co Valley School District Number 40. Recommended motion that the Board of Education approve the memorandum of understanding between the Boys and Girls Club and the Mullen Co Valley School District Number 40 for the 2024 2025 school year. Um, second. Second. Okay. Uh, 
Second. Discussion? Great partnership. All right. Ramona Dixon. Aye. Jason Farrell. Aye. Lindsay Hines. Aye. Aaron Walter Smith. Audrey Adamson. Aye. Chess the Smith. Aye. And your winner. Aye. Uh, approval of the memorandum of understanding between Robert Young Center for Community Mental Health and the Colorado School District 40. Recommended motion that the Board of Education approve the memorandum of understanding between Robert Young Center for Community Mental Health and Mullen Coyote School District number 40 for the 24 2025 school year. Discussion? Roll call, please. Tracy Farrell. Aye. Lindsay, uh, Lindsay Hines. Aye. Aaron Walter Smith, Audrey Adamson, Hi. Chet DeSmith, Hi. Ramona Dixon, Hi. Andrew Weir. Hi. Uh, approval of the memorandum of understanding between Family and Resources and the Mullen Co Valley School District Number 40. Recommend a motion that the Board of Education approve the memorandum of understanding between Family and Resources and the Mullen Co Valley School District Number 40 for the 2024 school year. Second. Discussion. We'll call them. Lindsay Hines. Aye. Ms. Walter Smith. Andre Adamson. Aye. Jeff Smith. Aye. Melinda Dixon. Aye. Jason Farrell. Aye. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> Approval of the memorandum of understanding between the Center for Youth and Family Services for Solutions and the Mullen Co ed School District Number 40. Recommended motions that the Board of Education approve the memorandum of understanding between the Center for Youth and Family Solutions and the Mullen Co ed School District for the 2024 2025 school year. Second. Uh, discussion. All right, we'll call it. Mulder Smith, Audrey Adamson. Aye. Chuck Smith. Aye. Ramona Dixon. Aye. Jason Farrell. Aye. Lindsay Hines. Aye. Andrew Ware. Aye. All right, uh, approval of impact memorandum of understanding, course man boiler replacement. Uh, the recommended motion that the Board of Education enter into an impact memorandum of understanding with the Illinois Construction Labor Management Council for horse man boiler replacements. So Second. Discussion. This is no cost to us, right? No. It's just, we're just assisting uh, the memorandum. Yeah, but there's no obligation to cost, right? No, it's a agreement between uh, local labor council and school district for uh, timely completion work rules. All right, roll call. Ramona Dixon. Aye. Jason Farrell. Aye. Lindsay Hines. Aye. Aaron Walter Smith. Audrey Adams. Aye. Chet Smith. Aye. 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 Approval of impact memorandum of understanding of the high school welding labs project. More, uh, recommended motion that the Board of Education enter into an impact memorandum of understanding with the Illinois Construction Labor and Management Council for the Mullen High School Weight Welding Lab projects. So, Discussion. Roll call. Jason Farrell. Aye. Lindsay Hines. Aye. Aaron Walter Smith. Audrey Adamson. Aye. Chet DeSmet. Aye. Ramona Dixon. Aye. Andrew Weir. Aye. Approval of student teaching clinical agreement with Augustana College for the 2024-2025 school year. Recommended motion that the Board of Education approve the student teaching clinical agreement between Augustana College and the Mullen School District for the 2024-2025 school year. Second. Second. Uh, Discussion. Roll call. Lindsay Hines. Aye. Aaron Walter Smith. Aye. Audrey Adamson. Aye. Chet Smith. Aye. Ramona Dixon. Aye. Jason Farrell. Aye. Andrew Ware. Aye. Approval of clinical experience agreement with Western Governors University for the 2024-2025 school year. Recommended motion is that the Board of Education approve the clinical experience agreement between Western Governors University and the Mullen Coyote School District for the 2024-2025 school year. Okay. Okay. Roll call, please. Aaron Walter Smith. A discussion. I already did call discussion. Discussion. Oh, Aaron. Roll call, please. Aaron Walter Smith. 
Audrey Addison? Aye. Chet Smith? Aye. Ramona Dixon? Aye. Jason Farrell? Aye. Lindsay Hines? Aye. Andrew Ware? Aye. Approval of cooperative agreement regarding pre student teaching placements and student teaching with St. Ambrose University for the 2024 2025 school year. Recommended motion that the Board of Education approve the cooperative agreement regarding pre student teaching placements and student teaching between St. Ambrose University and the Mullen Valley District School District for the 2024 2025 school year. So, discussion. Roll call. Ramona Dixon. Aye. Jason Farrell. Lindsey Hines. Aye. Aaron Walter Smith. Audrey Adams. Aye. Chet to Smith. Aye. Peter Ware. Aye. Second reading and approval of new board policies 2270, discrimination and harassment on the basis of race, color, and national origin prohibited. Recommended motions that the Board of Education accept in the second reading of new board of education policy 2270, discrimination and harassment on the basis of race, color, and national origin prohibited. And present. So moved. Second. Discussion? Roll call, please. Jason Farrell? Aye. Lindsay Hines? Aye. Aaron Walter Smith? Audrey Addison? Aye. Chet Smith? Aye. Ramona Dixon? Aye. Andrew Ware? Aye. Reports, requests, and open discussion. Uh, I believe we have Dr. Savage on line. Dr. Savage, do you have anything? Hello, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Very good. I um, hope you're having a great night. Um, I'll certainly keep it short um, as I know that it's a little bit more difficult being virtual. I just wanted to say that we are here at the annual Model Schools Conference. It's one of the largest educational conferences in the country with over 5,000 attendees. Um, this year, the Moline Co Valley School District was one of only 11 districts across the United States to be recognized as an innovative district specifically for the work our district has done with aligning map data and the Illinois Five Essentials to drive school and district improvement. Dr. Pribble and Principals Lindsay Oswald and Stephen Etheridge had back-to-back -back presentations today, sharing our work and the positive results that have come from it. I'm proud of them and quite frankly, all of our administrators district-wide um, as they all have been involved in the work and this process throughout the last couple of years. I'll share more about our five essentials results at the July meeting, but we do have uh, some amazing growth to report and record participation from our parents across the district. So this is very exciting and I look forward to sharing more in July. And lastly, um, I believe Kristen Sanders is in the room. I heard her voice and I just wanted to publicly thank her one last time for her unwavering service to the district, the Board of Education and the community. I know that this is her last board meeting. I'm sorry I couldn't be there, um, but I didn't want it to end without recognizing her extraordinary contributions one more time. That is all I have. Kristen, uh, yeah, you were the first person we talked to. I know I don't know if you guys do. Kristen was the first person we talked to that kind of uh, when everything's overwhelming, you're, she's like, it's going to be okay. It's going to be easy. We're going to get this figured out. So thank you, Kristen, for everything you've done for us and the students uh, in this district. So, thank you. It's been my pleasure. Thank you for the All right. With that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.